Thank you very much, Tarek. Uh, our last speaker for today is Professor Yossi Leshem. Yossi, a professor emeritus in Tel Aviv University in the School of Zoology and studied bird migration for five decades. Um, Yossi, in the past he was the CEO of SPNI, the Society for uh, uh, Protection of Nature in Israel. Yossi is the secretary of the Hoopo Foundation. As part of his position, he initiated a flyover uh, lecture day and the hosting of the astronaut and the British pilot uh, as a tribute to increasing the collaboration between the three Abrahamic religions, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, through the migrating birds that know no boundaries. The events were organized after the International Swift Conference in Israel that Yossi held in the spring of 2018. This institute also is involved in Yossi's activity very much. We had a great uh, event in 2017 that's continuing of uh, Artists for Nature. Yossi will tell you about it. And uh, we are pleased, a uh, warm welcome to the initiate of the Flight to Hope events. Thank you. I have to tell you, now I understand what is life in extreme conditions. You have after a very long day, I am the last speaker. I was told that I share my time with Professor Price in one hour and understood we are four people. So I had to change a bit and I'll get it closer because I'm sure that you are hungry and you want to go and for dinner. Okay, this picture I got uh, half a year ago, okay, as you might know, we lost our astronaut, Ilan Ramon, who with the space shuttle Columbia, and every year we are making in the end of January a memorial uh, event in his memory. Two years ago, the Minister of Science, uh, uh, Mr. Akunis, called me and told me, Yossi, in this event, and they are bringing always astronauts from NASA to talk about the events, and uh, there is an, one astronaut who said he has to meet you. I said, why? He said, I don't know, but he wants to meet you. The astronaut uh, was, was uh, Ricky Arnold, who stayed in the Space International Shuttle for 197 last year, days, and he was three times walking in space and making three missions. So I met him, of course. I told him, what's the story? He said, I am an astronaut, but my hobby is birding. And I heard about you, and I want to join you. So I was really happy to do this. I said, of course, you can see him here in the space shuttle, and you can see him here walking in space. And then I told him, listen, that you have to go now one day for birding, not only in the memorial of Ilan Ramon. And he, I t he told me, listen, the Ministry of Science organized the program till Friday afternoon, Saturday I'm free. So I told him, but I have a problem. I cannot drive on Saturday, you know. He told me, no problem, I will drive. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, since then, we became friends. And then I told him, listen, we are making in Tel Aviv University every day in the biggest hall, in smaller shawl, a lecture day for the builders and another lecture day with the pilots of the Air Force. It's called the Way of the Vultures in the Sky. So I told him, let's give a lecture and tell you a combination of, uh, astronaut, of your astronaut job and that. And then he told me, Yossi, next year, in this, I mean 2018, I'm in the space for 197 days. But uh, in 2019, I'm coming for two weeks to Israel. And just to see how serious he was, two days before our lecture day in Smolash, he sent me this picture which he took from the shuttle of Israel and the Middle East because he knew that I'm talking on regional cooperation. Now we have Dave Shea reporter here. So I said, how can we make it a bigger story for Tel Aviv University and the SPNI to get uh, bird lovers connected and combine uh, science and other issues. So uh, uh, we succeeded to get nine pilots from UK who are coming to fly over Israel. They are coming by nine aircraft, landing in Elat, and on the 2nd of April, we are flying from Elat to the Dead Sea, landing in Bar Yehuda, coming to the research center. They will hear the Mr. Dov Litvinov telling the story of the cooperation because we are doing a lot of cooperation with the Jordanian. Then we are flying to Amman and flying to Jerusalem. And why are we flying to Jerusalem? Because we have in Jerusalem swifts which are nesting in the Western Wall. And uh, one of the keen people of, who are keen on studying the swifts 
He is also one of the British pilots. His name is uh, Mark Corret, and he told me, I, I will get the pilots, but what more important is, we have, if you don't know, in the Western world, 90 pairs of nesting swifts. And in the Church of Nativity, 40 pairs which are nesting there. And in Mosque in Amman, so we said, maybe we use the, the bird, the swift, as a symbol of cooperation with the three Abrahamic religions, with the Jews, Muslims, so in the, and uh, Christians. So in the flight, we have 25 people, every, the same share. We have our partner from Jordan, which is a general, Mansour Abu Rashid, who is our partner in other uh, projects. And um, Mark Coret is also a sculpturer, and he made in the, in the Christian quarter of the old city of Jerusalem a sculpture of a tree of nine meters high of an olive tree as a symbol of peace. And instead of the leaves, 150 real size swifts who are from bronze there, and he's selling now the swifts, and all the income is going for the I, I Hospital, St. John, in the Mustan, in the old city. So uh, that's one issue, and we are coming here, and then we are making a lecture there and a lot of other activities. We are here near Masada, and it, you know the founder of Tel Aviv University, University was Professor Mendelssohn, who established also our department, and we have here Noga, you heard her in the morning or yesterday, and uh, his name is uh, Shimon P uh, Perez, the one who took him in the in the field, Professor Mendelssohn, and he changed his name from Persky to Perez. So, <laughs> Mr. Perez was one of our biggest supporters, and we have a big project, which I am leading now since 2002, where we are using Barnhouse as pest control agent in the Middle East, and we have, in Israel, we started in one kibbutz, in Bechean Valley, Zdeliau, with 14 nesting boxes. We have now 4,500 nesting boxes in Israel. And this became a national project with the Ministry of uh, environment, the Minister of Agriculture and the Minister of Regional Cooperation, and since last week, fortunately, also the Ministry of Science. So we have the Tel Aviv University, and Mr. Perez is joining forces, and I, I skip some of them. The most important issue from my point of sight is not the archaeology and not the history, but we are a, in a bottleneck of three continents, and we have 500 million birds flying over Israel. And the Great Rift Valley, which the Dead Sea is here, I don't know if you've seen the stork migration, we are now in the peak migration of, uh, of the storks and raptors, so this is a big story for us. We have in the desert also the, the species diversity is amazing, for example, all the British guys or the guys from Europe will come to the Dead Sea here to see the Hume Stony Owl. This is a desert owl. We have about 100 pairs in the Judean Desert here along the cliffs and in the Negev Desert. And uh, this is a big story for them to see these birds. And of course, uh, as you know, birding is a big industry. So th what's the vision of all our activities? I always like to show Mr. Bush, the president of the state, standing like a bird lover, but he forgot to remove the cover of the binocular. <laughs> so, you know, when you work with politicians, you have to be really careful. And when I got this picture, I said, maybe it's not polite to show the president of the states like this, but fortunate enough, it happened to our minister of defense, <laughs> Mr. Perez. So the question, how do we want to see the Middle East? Do we want to see it like you see in the news or with what we are doing? We have now several projects that we are leading through Tel Aviv University and SPNI, educational projects and scientific projects and communal uh, projects, Arabs and Jews together. And if we are talking on bird migration, now we have huge numbers who are flying just over here. And we are talking about 100 million bird lovers that Israel is for them heaven with the migration and such a big uh, diversity. These are the stocks which are coming here. We have pelicans, the entire population of the Palearctic pelicans are flying over Israel. And that's, I skip the story of the Hula Valley. Unfortunately, we dried the Hula Valley, not only in Israel, but all the wetlands in the Middle East, in Jordan and in Iraq and in Turkey and Syria were dried out. So th this is a problem for all these pelicans. And I skip the story. And I had another issue which is very relevant to here to the Great Rift Valley. As you know, for bird lovers or for researchers, this is heaven, of course, we're not talking about migration. But for the pilots of the Air Force, it's a disaster. And we lost 11 aircrafts were crashed because of the bears, several of them just over here. And just to tell you, this pilot flew here, five miles from here, very fast, 400 knots, 900 meters above ground level, and one eagle on the migration time penetrated the engine, and he, he bailed out. His F-16 was destroyed. Fortunate enough, he succeeded 
uh, to, to escape and he became a general. So we, through Tel Aviv University, we made a big study with bird watchers and I go fast with motorized glider. We followed the birds every day here along the Rift Valley till the Lebanese border. We had a Russian um, radar in Latrun and uh, we made maps for the Israeli Air Force where to stop and fly on the migration time, on the height, on the location, on the time, and immediately it dropped down by 76% since 1984. So I'm involved in these bird studies and with the Israeli Air Force, it saved the Israeli Air Force $1.5 billion till now. And of course, more important, the life of the pilot. Once I gave a lecture in UK to the, to the generals of the RAF, and in the end, this is typical, typical British. One lady stood up and said, Yossi, you don't save only the life of the pilots, but also the life of thousands of birds. Okay, of course. But, <laughs> you know, that's the point. Anyway, you know, in Israel, you're making your army service, and then you, at the age of 40, 45, you leave. I'm, st I'm, 70, I'm becoming next month 72, and I still do my army service for the Air Force, but, of course, on this issue. And just to show you how it works, I print, I, I, I published a book, Flying with the Birds. We made a ceremony with our president at that time, the 2000 President Weizmann, on the, the guy with the mustache is Imad Atash from Beit Sahur, our Palestinian partner in the project with the, with the birds. And uh, I was highly impressed when uh, President Weizmann, on the 20th of July, finished his cadence as a president. He flew with an helicopter to Jordan to meet His Majesty King Abdallah. And you see on his right side is this, uh, uh, a Schumer, who was his personal helper, and he is holding a box. This is this book, Flying with the Bird, with the dedication that President Weizmann wrote me, like the birds who know no boundaries, hopefully we, the people, will do the same. Of course, it not really works. We, st we followed the bird migration also with that, and um, Angela Merkel helped us through um, Max Planck Institute with 1.3 million euros to follow 120 German stocks. So all the Germans are now up, unfortunately, with uh, Professor Klafter. But later she came to get a PhD of honor, and I told uh, Professor Klafter, give me 10 minutes. I convinced her, no, no, you see no time. She came for 45 minutes. But finally, so I said in the crowd, and suddenly his, her secretary, where is Yossi Leshim? She wanted to say hello. I ran up there, and you know, I speak German. My parents are from Germany. And I th when I was running, I said, what will I tell her in 45 seconds? You know, like extreme condition, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> so I t I t but I told her straight to the parent. I said, Dr. Merkel, I know that you are busy and you have to leave, but when you have been the Minister of Environment, you gave Tel Aviv University 1.3 million. Now you are Chancellor, you have to give us 13 million. So she laughed and said, now I am with people, not with parents anymore. And uh, just to show you how it worked, we made a big website. We have now 420 schools. Arab and out of them 110 Arab schools who are learning on bird migration. We made a big project. I skip part of it and we follow the birds. And just to show you how it works, <coughs> this is a summary of 20 years of study of 200 uh, German stocks. Each dot is a stock with a radio transmitter. The stock of West Germany goes through Gibraltar. They avoid flying over the Mediterranean because no thermals. And most of them are flying over the Rift Valley, where you are sitting now. If you get up tomorrow at 8 o'clock and look up, maybe you are lucky to see thousands of these stocks. So all of them are flying along the Great Rift Valley till Cape Town. And then they are staying the entire winter there. And in the spring, they fly back almost at the same route to their nesting sites. So we are sitting here on road number six of bird migration. So this is not extreme condition only on other issue. This is one of the key issues, which is a big story here. So we are doing a lot of educational work. And we had a griffin vulture, which was nesting in, in Jordan, in Wadi Dana, and the Nature and Park Authority are establishing feeding station for the vultures because they are lacking food. So once, uh, with a radio, one vulture from Jordan was coming every morning to Ramon Crater to have some kosher meat and back to Ramon, <laughs> back to Jordan. We have a severe problem in the entire Middle East, and I do it really briefly, with spraying and using pesticides and uh, causing really problems for the environment. So we started to establish these nesting boxes, which I already mentioned. And you know, these owls, they are like the ultra-orthodox in Israel, between six and 12 chicks every year. So we, and 
you see, since 90, uh, 2008, it became a national project, and we have all these boxes. Then we started to, to get the Jordanians, and this guy, General Mansour Abu Rashid, who was the head of the intelligence, and he established a, a small institute in Jordan, which is called Amman Center for Peace and Development. He was signing the peace treaty in 1994 in, in the Arabah Valley, uh, with Rabin and Clinton and, and, and President, and he came to the Knesset to give a lecture in the Knesset, and uh, we made an exhibit about the problem with Mr. Rivlin, he's now in the news because of his wife, and at the end of the event, Mr. Rivlin came to me and said, Yossi, this was the best event of the year. But you know, I am not, at that time I was 65, I told him, Mr. Rivlin, probably you want everyone to leave the Knesset happy, this is the best. He said, no, I tried for six years to bring a, a VIP from Jordan, they don't want to come, but through the best they are coming so nicely. So we have the Arabs, we made even posters with no logo of Tel Aviv University or others, only in Arabic, no Hebrew, so all the, even the ones who are, have some po political problems are joining forces. We had one pair f uh, seven years ago, now we have five, the male in Israeli, uh, Barnaul, the female, um, uh, a Jordanian, and they are raising the cheeks, and they are doing well, and the issue is then not only a biological study, it gets people together. You see an Israeli farmer with Palestinian and Jordanian farmers together, some of the seminars, they are even dancing together. We have an, a guy from Lausanne University who is a Barnaul expert, so we got even from the government 2,000 ammunition boxes, we converted them to nesting boxes of owls. So this is the modern version of Prophet Isaiah changing the swords to plowsheds, okay? And the top of the top for us was five years ago when we found for the first time ever in the literature one male with two females, Begemia, and they raised 19 chicks. Can you imagine? You know what is a job for a male to bring food for two ladies and 19 chicks? Not easy. How can it, how were we sure that was going? As you know, the females, when they are brooding the eggs, they have a, a brooding patch, as you can see here on the lower part. And the, so these are the two ladies, and the, the male is just going and bringing food, he never brood, so he doesn't have the patch, you see? And they are moving from Israeli part to Palestinian parts. And uh, last year, just to tell you, and I'm, fi I'm finishing soon, last year, we made an event, this is the president of Switzerland and his wife, we made an event with 150 ambassadors in a, in a big farm with barn house, and he was talking only on the Middle East, and he gave us now the first 50,000 uh, francs, and it's going to be a big story. The swift I told you about are nesting in the Western Wall, and this is a German researcher who succeeded to develop an algorithm and freeze the flight of the swift of the Western world. This is a 40-second picture, and you can see the movement of the swift in the Western world. So we make events there. Even the rabbi of the Western world, for the first time ever, is blessing the swift way back. In the time of the temple, it never happened. So we are changing the mind even of the ultra-Orthodox. We brought their death. People are coming. That's that. And last thing... Um, we made, uh, two years ago, a seminar. We brought artists from 24 countries who were sitting six days in our part, in the Judean desert, six days in Jordan, making paintings of the Dead Sea. We made a nice album, which we printed, and which I think is really nice. And uh, not only that the, the professionals were sitting and painting, in Jordan we brought 160 students who came for a full day to paint together with them to learn about the problems of the Dead Sea which is dying out. We, in the Israeli side, this is in Engedi, we brought Bedouins and students from Jericho. See this, and to, to summarize, we are working now on the, our globe is small. I have friends now in Cornell University who are doing the same that we did with Stokes, but they do it with waders. Look at this. Every dot, these are waders, red chest node, who are nesting in Siberia, moving in the winter to New Zealand and Australia. For one week, they stay in the Yellow Sea in China for filling their energy with some food. Then they go to stay the entire uh, winter in Australia and New Zealand, and then the way back, like the stocks from Europe to Africa, is in East Africa. You see the same, they stop for a week for refueling, for roosting, and then they go back to their nesting grounds. So this works, as you can see, very nicely, and we are trying now to cooperate with all the different people on this issue. Last thing, one of our, you know, in the Judean desert, we are trying to, this is one of the strongholds of wildlife in Israel. 
just above us here. We had about 12 pairs of golden eagles nesting. Unfortunately, most of them, from different reasons, are gone. So this guy, Ron Migater, is now studying golden eagles in the Alps. And then he will come back after finishing his PhD in Bern University. And he learned the techniques, how to follow them. What I did with the storks, he is doing now with the, with the golden eagles, but he got information every second, the location, the height, and the velocity of the eagles. These are a pair of golden eagles. You can see how they are moving and getting the thermals on the slopes of the Alps. And they are stay together, a nice pair. So the same, hopefully, we can do here and study what's going on in the Judean Desert. I wanted to show you also a very nice film about what's going here. We lost our leopards here. And we started in our, you know, the new Steinart Museum, which is in Tel Aviv University. We collected uh, from a German priest who was here in 908, and he killed, he killed many of the animals of the last one. The last O is the last, the la I'm, not, I'm serious, the last uh, crocodile, the last uh, uh, cheetah, and so on. This is the cheetah, see from Jordan, one of the last ones. So what we are aiming, we want to study nature, we want to learn about nature. Extreme condition is here, and I promised him that I finish in 10 minutes. Thank you very much. No, no, no time for questions. People are finished. No, but the, but the bus didn't come yet, so... Okay. <laughs> ah, okay. Ah, the bus didn't come. So I can show you the video. So, ah, and as, 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 as you can see, if you join uh, forces, I always show it, you can, even, you can even fish on the highway. And, but you have to know where you are going. You see, this was taken in South Africa. Our public bar is presently not open because it is closed. This is a very simple message. Uh, the bus didn't come yet. <laughs> you know, uh, so. can, can I still ask one, one question, yes. you know, as, as a German? Yeah, sure. Did Angie give you the 13 million? No, that's no? the problem. No, she didn't. Yeah. But I am on she never day. delivers ha, to we, the promise, you know. We will get her, don't worry. <laughs> okay. That's a project we talked about with the artist. You see, with the kids painting together. It's a five minutes, four minutes film. Talented artists from all over the world took of the drawing scene. Dead is the last word one can use to describe this scene out of so many positive ways. This is a Bonelli single nesting here. A geological treasure of minerals and salt, and the lowest place on earth. A hub of archaeology and heritage sites, containing desert habitats with rare animals. A unique oasis with living creatures yet to be researched. Millions of migratory birds resting on its shores along their flyway. The artist team receives its first mission in a new environment, Zarqamari, one of the most beautiful canyons on the Jordanian side of the Dead Sea. This is my studio, in fact. And the challenge is to, you know, you have all of that and to put it. We were dropped here. And uh, we've got about three hours. The light is changing very fast, and I want to capture this fantastic light in here. I've got to work quickly. Time is running short for the artists, as well as for the declining water level, which is a concern on both sides of the sea. I 
I am sad about the city if I compare it now with the city 30 years ago. 30 years ago, water arrived almost to the neighborhood here. The city in 30 years from now will die. It will become as a swimming pool. The only thing we can succeed and we can win to sit together around the table and to find a solution. So I, I am sure we can help the decision maker to uh, give the right to the death scene. While clouds of uncertainty cast a shadow over the sea, Paul Winter, the world-renowned musician, is well aware of the region's affluence. It's like the, the universal feeling that people have about children. And the same should be with our feelings toward nature. It's something that uh, has to be preserved in any way that we can. Ym Amelach is not just for us, but for all the world. And we, as citizens of the world, are required to protect Ym Amelach. This is the unique thing that we all have in common. People. ירדנים, פלסטינים, ישראלים, חקלאים שפועלים יחד. והגיע הזמן שאנחנו נתרום לים המלח.